So now we are going to do something a little bit different. We are going to work off of your in-class assignment, but as a class for the rest of class, um, because I wanted to explore these two topics and I really like wanted to give you prompts to think through how to do it. And I was like, it's easiest to just do it on the in-class assignment. So we're gonna work through that together. So we're gonna look at number two on your in-class assignment. So we are trying to find the, uh, we're eventually gonna find the critical points for a non-homogeneous system. So by non-homogeneous, what we mean is we have this other vector that we are adding to the system. And we haven't discussed how to find critical points for things like this, or how to classify critical points. Because finding the critical points is actually going to be pretty easy. Um, it's going to be classifying them. It's going to be a little bit more challenging. Uh, Nika, we're working on number two on your in-class assignment together. Okay? So if I want to find the critical points for this system, any idea what I would do? Uh, we're not going to do that quite because we have this extra vector throwing us off. So we can't find eigenvalues in vectors. So when we are finding these critical points, we're always setting our derivative values equal to zero. Because if the derivative is zero, there is no change. So Sarah, kind of going back to what we were talking about before, if our derivative is zero, then your system isn't changing at all, right? And that's what we want with a critical point slash equilibrium value. We don't want to be changing. So once you are at that point, you want to stay at that point is a way we can think about it. So I'm going to go ahead and write out the system of equations where I let x prime be zero. So if I write out my system of equations where I let x prime equal zero, I'll have zero equals one x one, plus one x2, and then for this first equation that I'm getting from um, the top row, what else do I need? Plus two. Plus two, right? I gotta incorporate that vector. And then I'm gonna have zero equals, and then we're going to have x1 minus x2 plus zero. This is a system with two ordinaries and two equations. Are we going to be able to find, solve for x1 and x2? Yeah, we're going to be able to do it pretty easily. Um, so, yeah, let's just do it together. So, I can take this second equation and that gives me x1 equals x2, right? Plug it into my other one. I've got zero equals x2 plus x2 plus 2. So solving for x2, I'm going to get x2 equals negative 1. Beautiful. Which also means that x1 equals negative 1. Okay. So my equilibrium value for x star is the vector negative 1, negative 1. So finding my equilibrium value, I don't think too bad. But now the question is like, how can we go about classifying this equilibrium value? That's going to be a lot harder. I mean, not a lot harder. I told you it's only three more steps based on the problem, right? So the way we're going to achieve this is our goal is to turn this non-homogeneous system into a homogeneous system. Because we have all this information about what the critical point of a homogeneous system looks like. We just wrote a whole chart about. So that's going to be our goal. And we're going to do this by having a change of variables. We are going to let um, x equal x star plus
And then we are also going to let x prime equal u prime. I forgot to put that one in there, but that's the other thing we're going to do. So if I'm taking my equation, I'm going to have u prime equals, and then I still have my matrix, 1, 1, 1, negative 1. But where I have my x, I'm going to replace it with x star plus u. So I'm going to replace it with 1, negative, or negative 1, negative 1, plus u. And then I still have my plus 2, 0. And now we're just going to do some algebra. So uh, are we allowed to distribute matrices inside parentheses? As long as everything inside the parentheses is a correct a good dimension? Yeah, totally fine. So when I do my matrix times my negative 1, negative 1 vector, I'm going to get negative 2, 0. Plus 1, 1, 1, negative 1 times u plus 2, 0. So u is 1, 1, 1, negative 1. U. So now we have this new homogeneous system. That's a new prime, right? New prime. Thank you, Sarah. New prime. So, my question to you is what is the critical point of this new system? We will eventually find the eigenvalues, but I'm just curious, what is the critical point of this system? Not classifying it yet, but what is the critical point? It's going to be 0, 0 because it's a homogeneous system. Exactly. So we could do the same thing, set it equal to 0, but since it's a homogeneous system, we are going to get 0, 0. So the critical point for this new system is 0, 0. Okay. And now if we want to classify the type and stability of this new system. Like Sarah said, we are going to find our eigenvalues of our matrix. I found my eigenvalues, and it's going to be lambda 1 is the square root of 2, and lambda 2 is the negative square root of 2. So this is going to make it a subtle and unstable. What do you think that means about our original critical point? It's also a subtle one, too. Yeah. So this is also a subtle and unstable. Okay. I feel like the long story short is we did all this math. Right? So this is how you're going to find the critical points when you have a non-homogeneous system. But do you really need to go through the change of variables in order to classify this critical point? Because all we ended up doing was taking, finding the eigenvalues of our original matrix. Right? But that's going to happen again. So I gave you an example of like why this change of variable works but you're going to be able to just 
use the original. You guys want to see what this looks like graphically? 